In this episode, I bring you my friend, Heidi Ryder. Heidi and I go way, way, way back. We actually met on Facebook because she was interested in joining one of my challenge groups. I used to run these, these online fitness groups when I was a beach body coach. So I went just to, for kicks and to give you some context, I went and looked at my Facebook messenger thread that when she, she and I last talked. So, you know, I was a beach body coach from 2014 to mid 2018. So I hadn't talked to her since 2016. So it'd been a long time since I talked to her. That was the last time we had messaged back and forth. And she reached out to me on January 4th of this year. In the episode, I thought it was like four months ago, but I guess it was further uh, ago than that. But it was, you know, everybody's thinking in January, what am I going to do this year? What resolutions am I going to uh, employ? How am I going to change my life? You know, we all go through that at the beginning of January. And so she reached out to me and she was wanting to get back into the Beachbody world. And so I told her that I'm no longer working in the business. Uh, and so she said, well, what are you doing? And I said, well, I created this program to help midlifers find purpose. So we just kind of started a conversation. And at the time, I also believe I was uh, rebranding and changing my program somewhat. So uh, I actually didn't open enrollment until July. So we just kept chit chatting and chat. And she then, when I opened enrollment, she came into the Spark School, the second half Spark School. And it was so amazing to see her change and find something that lit her up because that's what the Spark School does. It's, it's, its intention is to help you find more purpose, to find the thing or things, because you can have more than one thing, that light you up so much that you no longer need to take a pill or an energy drink to have energy. It comes naturally. You're self-motivated. You're so excited. You can't even think about anything else. You don't think about that empty nest anymore in particular, because that's one of the things that I really want to help people do because when their kids leave, it's just devastating. You need to find something new to do. And so Heidi is just this amazing person that had very little confidence and a lot of self-doubt in her capabilities. And as she went through the school and, you know, I do interactive uh, coaching sessions. So as we talked and as she grew through the lessons uh, and the coaching sessions, she came upon something that sparked her and she took off and did it. All this self-doubt about, you know, there's a lot of things that we haven't done. And so we don't think we can do them. Well, there's evidence that there's things you've done before that you didn't know, and then you did them, right? So why don't you think you can't do something new and different that you haven't done before? So she learned so much about herself and gained so much confidence, and now she has this amazing podcast that she is producing. It, it's just an amazing story, and I asked her to come on and be a guest because uh, it just goes to show you, it's just yet another midlife transformation story. And hers happened in seven weeks, basically from the point in which she signed up for the school and the course itself is six modules. So after six modules, meanwhile, she's already doing the actions. She's already, you know, the lessons are getting her creative juices going. And she's, so she's spending a lot of her time thinking about what she wants to do and it helps the lessons help kind of refine that and then she got quiet for a bit and I was like uh oh you know because when people get quiet sometimes that means they just like it was too much they just like checked out but no the next message I got from her was here's the trailer to my podcast I was like floored I was like what you know so that was at the end of the seventh week since she had started she had already put together a podcast and had a name, had a photo, had a trailer, and and then she's had a, a new episode. She's like five episodes now. And so it's just amazing to watch her her growth and hear her testimony about how possible it is to change and find your purpose very quickly. If you're focused and you're with the right 
community and have the right support because I think that's a big part of it. It's very easy when we're by ourselves to just like say, mm, there's other more important things. There's no accountability when you're by yourself. So it really helps. And the tools that she learned are something that really helped her see her way. And as I tell her, she's, she's, her journey is just beginning. I can't wait to see what happens in the next few months as we close out 2020, which is a very tough year for many people. And it's going to be Heidi's breakthrough year. So long intro. I hope this gives you some context. Let's hear from Heidi. Welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Lives. And I am so excited about today's episode because who I have here today is Heidi Ryder. And she is one of my Spark School students who joined my school in July. And I wanted her to come on here because I love to share midlife inspirational stories. And Heidi is such an inspiration to me. I'm so proud of what she's done, how far she's come since the beginning of July. And I wanted to let you guys meet her and hear what she's been up to. One of the things that I am excited about is I am now a listener on Heidi's podcast. So she has a podcast, which she'll share a little bit about, but it's got a unique theme. It's, you know, there's so many podcasts that are so similar and this one's really different and I love it. I, I just have to tell you too, that I was shocked at how quickly things progressed with Heidi because when she came into the spark school, she had a lot of, and I'll let her talk. I want, really want her to share with you kind of what the thoughts were that were going on in her head and why she joined. But she was just somebody who was, I would call her clueless, clueless. And I love when clueless people come in and do the lessons and then the lights start going on and then they find something that really sparks them. So welcome. Oh, thank you. I am so happy to be here today. Wow, I am too. So can you just start by saying what, so Heidi and I go back, um, as I said in the intro, we go back to my days of Beachbody and she joined one of my groups and I'm wearing my Shakeology t-shirt in celebration. Even though I'm no longer an official Beachbody coach, I still drink Shakeology every single day because I love it so much. And I'm coming on, I started drinking Shakeology October 4th of 2013. So look, I mean, it's like seven years, but um, I, you know, I'm not here to talk about Shakeology, but I had the shirt on and I was, I was going to change. And then I, I remembered Heidi and I met because of this. So I was like, I'm just going to wear it because it just brings back. Um, so we've known each other for a long time. We met each other on Facebook and we lost touch for a while. And, um, and then you just reached out at some point about maybe four or five months ago, I think. Anyways, talk about how you came to hear about the school, the second half Spark School, and how you realized it was something that could potentially help you. And what were you looking for? And then we'll talk about where you are now. Well, I was at a point in my life that I felt like I really have to do something. And for those of you, of course you don't know, but I have MS. And so my life is a little different. And so I was thinking, well, I've got to do something. And I was scrolling through Facebook one day and I saw Lori's picture and her ad for the Spark School. And so I got in touch with her and she told me what she was doing. And I thought, that's interesting. So, and let me interject here too, because I, you have always been such an inspiration to me, Heidi, because with MS, she has a lot of limitations. I remember you posting one day when you were doing Beachbody and one of your shoes was scuffed because you couldn't pick it up. But here you were, and then you, you posted it and said, you know, I do have these challenges, which was really a vulnerable moment. And I remember feeling how like brave of you for doing that. And here you were doing the workouts, many of the workouts that people who didn't have MS and had all their normal functions. And he, you had a little bit 
of a challenge physically, and yet here you were showing up and still making effort and working hard at what you wanted to do. And so you've always been this person that had a dream to, to help and to inspire and to make the world a better place. And now here through your podcast, it's so amazing. It just makes me so happy. Oh, thank you. Well, it was very vulnerable the day that I posted. And it wasn't just my shoes were not just scuffed. They were holes. I had worn through my shoes. I think I had a picture of two pair of shoes. And then I made the comment that every shoe that I own looks like this or my walking shoes. And so that's kind of the way my life is. It's a little challenge, but yet I think I have to, I have to do something. The roadblock is there, but I have to figure out how to get around it. And that's kind of my whole way of thinking. I have had that thought my whole life that no matter the pop, the problem, I had to find a way around it. And I have gone through a divorce the loss of my both of my parents and having to start over and go to try to finish my degree so that I could at least have a bachelor's and hopefully qualify for a decent job. How old were you when you were diagnosed with MS? I was diagnosed when I was 25. And at that time I was going to school. I had started school when my youngest was three years old. I had gone back to school because I had graduated once before, but I'd gone back to school to get a teaching certificate or teaching degree, I'm sorry. And how many kids? I have three children. So I went back to school. I was going to be an elementary education teacher because I'd been teaching my little siblings and my children. So I thought I would be a perfect teacher. I love people. And so my second semester, Oh, and let me go back because I had not really felt well for several years, but I didn't know why. So my second semester, I was diagnosed with MS. And so here you were a young mom at 25, yes. you had three kids mm -hmm. back to school, going to college and your second semester, you're diagnosed with MS. And so yeah. you married very young, I guess. Yes, I married what I got married when I was um, 19. So and then I started having my children when I was 20, you know, and I just had several different medical issues over the years. I had several miscarriages. I didn't feel well. And so, but I didn't know why. And at one point, the doctor said, you need to go see a psychiatrist. This is just all in your head but I really had problems and my eyes would have problems. I would see double vision, really severe double vision, or I would have light flares in my eyes. And So then um, you get MS, did you still finish school or did you have to quit? At what? that point, I didn't. I tried to go back and I took a break for I think a semester and then I tried to go back and I would pick up online classes. So I almost had my associates. And then I just thought, I can't do this because every time I would try to go back and my marriage was a wreck. So all of this stuff on top of it, but I knew I had to do something. And so I stopped school. I just started thinking, well, I will just do what I can do. And so I just helped at the school. And I, every day I would go volunteer. Then I thought Burley was my closest city, which was 45 mil miles away from my home. And so I thought I'll try to get a job in Burley. And so I went to the newspaper and I said, I'm just wondering if you could use a receptionist. And the editor said, well, we, I'm wondering, would you, would you like to write? I said, I love to write. I love to write children's stories. And he said, bring me a sample. So I took the sample and he said, you are really good, but this is not the kind of writing that we would need. But he hired me that day. So for nine years, I was working as a correspondent. And the reason I tell you this is because it kind of ties into what I'm doing today.
Yeah, because you brought but, it up, I remember, when you were trying yes. to come up with what you wanted to do, that kept coming back as something that you loved doing. So let me ask you, you, you clearly have a health issue. You're a mom of three kids. You have this drive to have more in your life. So you go to get this job. A lot of people would probably not even make an effort. Did you, was that something you just really wanted more to life or did you did you think that your marriage was gonna not last or what kept you like still seeking other things well i wanted more for myself also i'm looking at it wouldn't be bad to have extra money and i didn't know i kept i kept hoping and and dreaming that my marriage would survive but i didn't know and so at that point, I really wasn't thinking about a divorce. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking, I loved what I was doing. I love writing. I love people. And so to get out and talk to someone, and I would be going along and I would see a story or I would see a picture. And so I would go over and talk to them. And, and I was raised in that area. So I knew the history of like the fair, you know, what days they did certain things and the prominent people in both counties that I would want to talk to. So I had that edge. And just so people have a little context geography wise, Heidi lives in Idaho and kind of remote, I guess, area, lots of, lots of farms. So let's move forward and to like the beginning of July. Then I did decide I was going to start the SPART school. And I thought, do I dare spend that much money? Because I don't have a job. So how am I going to do this? And then Lori made a comment one day that really hit me that we can be thinking things like, I can't afford this and I don't have a way to get the money. But with that mindset, that's exactly what will happen. And so I started thinking, well, this is more than I would normally spend, but I'm going to take, I'm just going to take a chance and I'm just going to do it. Trust me, um, life is not always happy every single minute of every single day. And MS is a challenge, but I feel like we have challenges. And so I started thinking, well, what can I do? And so knowing what I was capable of doing, physically, maybe not so much, but what can I do with my brain? And what can I do with my mind and my voice? What can I do to be a voice to someone that maybe needs that? And I thought, I could do a podcast. One of the things with you is you've been searching for a while mm -hmm. for something. And I love that because, you know, what I've learned is that through my own experience and through now teaching people is that when you are looking, when you have this inner feeling of wanting more, that's your soul trying mm -hmm. to tell you uh, that there's more, there's something bigger out there for you, mm -hmm. but you had a hard time as a lot of people do figuring out what that was. It was an evolution, but a very fast one. Cause you very quickly, you kept going back to your roots mm -hmm. and it's funny because you bring up the, the newspaper job and it's interesting how you brought it up here because, uh, you did bring it up a lot in the beginning. We were going back through what did you like when you were a child? What were some of the first jobs you have? What were the accomplishments you had that, you know, really stuck out? But there was a lot of self-doubt. And I think that's normal, although we always think it's not normal because we think we're the only ones. And you did have ideas. So can you walk the listeners through what was going through your mind and how did you come to realize that this podcast was really something you wanted to do? Well, I, I knew that I had to find something. And we're all, as we know, and we are the second ha half of our lives here, um, 
we're going downhill now. And so it's time to really embrace where we are today and just live today, just like, like it's our best ever. And so I thought so when you well, say downhill, can you define what you mean by downhill? Because when oh. I think of downhill, oh, I think downhill. That, sounds that sounds terrible. <laughs> okay. When we are, when, when I was looking at the fact that I was midlife and then now I'm 58 and I'm thinking 60 is not that far away. And if I'm going to do something now is the time. And so I decided I've got to figure this out. And so I like to listen to podcasts. Um, I thought I could do that. I work for the newspaper, so I know how to write a story. I know how to form a story. And I love to talk to people. And I think I have everything I need to have to make this happen. Yeah, I just want to interject so people understand this. You were going through some exercises that were kind of prompting you to really be quiet, listen to what's coming up for you, do these different things. But you had no experience technology-wise in how to set up a podcast or create a podcast, right? No, I didn't. You had nothing. I knew nothing about how to do it but I feel like I can do this and I'm going to make it happen. So I start searching and I start finding and I decided that podcasting would work for me. I, I do believe that you didn't feel that you could learn it and you gained that confidence. That's true. I knew it was something that could be learned, but I felt like how am I really going to make this happen? There's so much technology and so much everything that is kind of new to me. I know a lot of things, but I don't know as much as Lori. You know, people who have maybe worked in a corporate office mm -hmm. and do that every day, all day. And most so, of what I do now, I didn't learn in my corporate job. It's all, all, all new. So I think what you started to see, because we were looking at evidence that you, you have learned a lot in the past. And so you started to believe that, oh, yes, I have evidence of having been successful before uh, when I didn't know anything and learned it. And so just apply the same strategy, then go for it. So I, I just want people to know how little you knew, which was zero, about, about creating a podcast. And you're a one-man show, and you created it, and you're about to do your fourth episode, right? Or you My do, fifth your episode. Fifth, your fifth, yes. Yeah. Yes. Plus the trailer, so I guess you've got five and a half. Yeah. So this was totally new to me. I knew the bits and pieces of running a computer and the internet and things, but not, nothing really deep and so okay i have to figure this out and what made you come up with you said you like to tell stories so you yes. saw a little bit of this connection between you were a journalist at one point you like to write stories you love to find stories and think of stories and there are is a lot of that which is really fun the creative side of a podcast is thinking about who's what your theme's going to be and what guests you're going to have and so what made you and i i love your theme I love your voice on the podcast. I hope you get some listeners from my podcast. Anybody who has like lived and been a part, I had a horse growing up. I didn't live on a farm. We had two acres. It was, I guess, a mini, mini farm, but I love the smell of manure. I love the hay and I fed my horse in the morning. I would walk down, you know, across our backyard and into his pen and feed him. So there's a lot of aspects of, farm life that I love so in your voice is so great I love I, ju I just love everything about what you've done and what you've created and it's so professional to me having just like a lot of people it takes a little while for them to get comfortable and do that and I was really excited to hear you do your first interview with somebody because what I found with podcasts is it's so neat to meet people 
And some people might be like old friends, like I've had my college roommate on and my chiropractor on. And so it's fun to reconnect with people as well through, through what you do. So what made you, because if somebody's out there, I sat on my podcast idea for three years and I didn't know, I knew I wanted to do a podcast, but I, and I wanted to inspire people, but I wasn't exactly sure what it would be about, but I just didn't. I just kept it like suppressed. I didn't pull it out of my subconscious and really work on like you did. If I had a podcast, what I mean, you were actively engaged in thinking every single day. And we work in 90 day buckets, come up with a plan of what you want to do. And even if it's just, I want the idea, I want to know what it is within 90 days. It could be simple, something simple, mm -hmm. but you, you wanted to know what it was and you wanted to put it into action. And so I think having that intentional action really helps. If I had had intentional action around wanting to do a podcast, I probably would have had something a lot sooner. It wasn't until it became more important and more of a priority for me. So what made you, and I love how you went back to your roots for it because that's a lot of times where our heart is. Mm -hmm. So tell the listeners what it's about and why you, you really wanted to, to go with that theme. Well, when I was thinking about the name for my podcast, I, my first thought was, well, I have to really know myself. How do I see myself? Well, I see myself as a farmer's daughter because that's, how I started and that's how I still feel. I'm not on a farm, but that's how I am. And I have so many memories and so much of my life. I was in the farming area for 40 years. So for 40 years, I was embraced with everything farming. And so I thought, well, I don't want to name this farming. I start thinking, well, what other words could go with farming? So I thought acres, acres, and it just flew together. And I feel like, I don't know about you, but I do not believe in um, coincidence. Mm -hmm. I really feel like somebody helped me know. Yes. This is what it should be. Like mm -hmm. I've said, both of my parents have passed away and my mother always wanted to write. And sometimes I feel like maybe she's helping me because yeah. I'm, I'm connected in, with that. So... Yeah. You, 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 you honed in on what you wanted to do and you were really focused on that. And when you focus on what you want and not what you don't want and don't have, the universe will, well, put it this way, the universe brings you what you think about and that was your real focus. Right. So it, it answered that call for you were looking for a name and you, and, if, and I think also once you hear, just like the second half spark school, you know, I had a no, different name for over a year and I just completely rebranded it because I was like, when I heard that and I started learning about spark types, I was like, oh my gosh. And when it came, it was like, that is what I'm going to be doing. So, and you don't have to start with a name. I think a lot of people get hung up with names, but a podcast, it's really important. And it's really important in particular to have a theme. So wow. her podcast name is Acres of Life, which no. I love. because Not it can quite. Be You're close. Oh, what, what? My podcast is called Acres of Life Lessons. Okay. And so the reason I thought of that is because what is it trying to teach or to talk about? I want people to know with my podcast that the acres, meaning the farm, and the acres can be five acres. It can be just like the one I'm doing today, 10,000 acres, or it can be in your backyard your flower garden or just a container garden that is your acreage and what life lessons do you learn from that so I just want people to look at the farm as something more than just a crop and a cow yeah I love that I love how in your first episode you talk about your life when you were growing up and the the special things that you remember as a child and you didn't have a lot of money but mm -hmm. as a child you had so much. And I think as you got gotten older, you've appreciated it even more. And so I just love, cause it really brings to life. You know, I, I listened to it. I remember on my walk and I just was like there in mm -hmm. that 
the way you told that story, it, it made a picture. It made a very clear picture in my mind. So it was kind of neat because you took us there. So I hope have, so. You have a very good, very good talent. So anyways, um, so now you're, you're interviewing people. So what is your longer term goal? Because the other thing that I like about it is that you have a wide variety of options with that. Because like you said, farm life can be a lot of things and you have a lot of talent in uh, things from being a farm girl. You know how to sew, you know how to um, cook really good and you love your garden. You post a lot of flowers. So now what? You're doing your podcast. How do you feel? Um, first of all, are you surprised that you did so much in so little time? I'm really surprised. When I stop and think, I'm doing my fifth episode today. I'm interviewing today. And so I'm excited. And I know that I wouldn't have done this without the Spark School. So yeah, so I think that knowing that you're committed to the work and that in that 90 day period, you need to get something done. But I will say that when you find something you love, and this is a lot of it, when you find something you're excited about, this is all your idea. I did not give you the idea. I just created the environment that made that idea happen because so many of us, life leads us. We don't lead in, in life. And so we get so busy and working on other people's priorities, as I say. Um, but I created this environment to allow, and these lessons to pull these ideas out of you. And once you found, it came from within though, and it right. all came from within Heidi. And once Heidi found that which she was excited about and started working on it, focus, productivity, energy, excitement, those things are just a byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you did a lot, but that I found that too. Now I get so much more accomplished just because I'm so focused on what I love. Right. And I, it's a good feeling when I get, I guess you'd call reviews, but just thoughts, you know, people will send me a message and say, good, good episode. Oh, this was great. And in fact, I had a person call me yesterday and said you are doing exactly what you should be doing i love what i'm doing i'm so glad you said that because other people see you more lit up it's this right. ripple effect too because there's they're they're loving that energy that's coming with you it's just good that i can make the world a better place that's a thing that i've always felt like if I can just make the world a better place and maybe I'm just doing it one podcast at a time, or maybe just a post or a picture or a smile. Yeah. And you asked me earlier about what I can see now doing with now after the podcast, I really can see myself looking and acres of life lessons could maybe become something like acres of um acres of cooking or acres of uh, gardening or organizing that i can take that and turn it into a course an online course or a community of people who missed their farm life who are right. now grown and you know there's so many different ways you can take this what has sparked you now? Um, and your journey has just begun. Right. I just want people to realize that all it really is, is just Lori just lit a spark. And so now it's up to me to try to figure out how to let it become a flame. You got to keep feeding it. Like, yes. I don't know if there's any Survivor fans out there, but I love the game Survivor. And sometimes they have to do this fire face off. Right. And whoever builds the flame the fastest. And it's, it's almost like you have the spark and now it's feeding it and just getting it b burning bigger and brighter. So your impact will be greater. It's just, I'm helping and I helped you and you're a great example of it. So thank you so much. 
but I'm just helping people find what's in, already inside of them. Right. And I didn't know, I had to figure it out and it took me many, many, many years. But when I finally was like, aha, okay, I know now how to do this. And that was what sparked me was to help other people do that. And you, you know, we don't know why we're here. We don't know why we're here, but I, I really think it's our job to find out, like you said, as you're on the downhill, <laughs> before yeah. you get to the bottom of the hill. <laughs> right. Yeah, figure it out, figure it out. So I'm excited for you. You're such a great example. Oh, thank you. When you get up in the morning, how do you feel now? I feel like rather than just thinking, what am I going to do today? And just quietly and just doing my morning stuff. Now I start thinking, what do I need to accomplish? I have to do this and this. And before I go to bed at night, I've started making a habit of looking at my calendar to make sure I know when I'm doing things and what I have to accomplish that day. And it's really quite nice. Mm, yeah. And you find yourself flooded with more ideas, I'm sure. Oh, I do. Because mm. as I go along, I think the Spark School really has kind of just opened my mind. It's kind of like if you're going in a dark place or in maybe a forest or something, but you're so curious, you know, there's something there. And so you just keep going and going and going until you find it. And, and then you get excited because you found it. So, oh my word, I have to go look for more. And that's the way it works. Yeah. And, you know, and like I said, it's a journey. You're going to, more things will be uncovered. It's like this revealing it's like you're going into the woods and you know, you, you, you come through a thicket and you see something, you know, and then you keep walking and you experience that, which is after that thicket. And then there's another thicket and oh my gosh, look at that cute little animal. Those are your little experiences you're having along the way. Right. But yes, it's all going to keep revealing. But you know, the point is that you're not on the wrong path. You're on the right path because you just know it feels right. so good and the reason i know this is good is because i like what i'm doing however i think the best part of it is that i can see how it can grow that it's yes a podcast is good and i would enjoy it but that is just kind of like my you know that's just my foundation, foundation. to some bigger things that can happen yeah it's just um your impact is going to be all the more greater. Like I, I think about a year from now, how many episodes you'll have done and how experienced you'll be. And it can go wherever you want it to go. You know, you might, you might write a book, you might have a recipe community. Cause I'm interested right. to hear some of your farm recipes. Cause you've talked about those, but you might be speaking on stage, inspiring people. And, and the other thing that I love so much about you is your disability has never defined you. It hasn't. Yeah. We talked about it in the very, very beginning and touched on it. And I think it was only because I brought it up. I don't even remember who brought it up, but it was because that's when I met you, it was just so powerful to me that you were doing the things that, and never using your disability as an excuse. And yeah nothing that you're doing now has anything to do with your MS. Right. No. And, you know, and I could look and say, well, yeah, but there are things, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's hard for me to sometimes form my words if I get too tired or if I get too warm or maybe uh, my thoughts aren't really clear, but I'm still going to do it. Yeah. And I'm still going to figure out a way. And I hope if nothing more, I'm just an inspiration to people that people yeah. can say, well, if she can do it, so can I. Any last words for somebody who is, as we wrap up, somebody who is where you were, you know, I think clueless is the best way. I mean, and I say that in, in a very, you know, warm way because I, and I only say that because I was there. And that's how I felt is clueless. I don't know if that was what you would say, but it's unfulfilled yet searching kind of way, what would you say to somebody who is possibly feeling the way you were, where you, you want to find that thing that you, you really think you're here for more? 
I think if I could tell anyone listening that if I had to define the way I was at that point in the way that some people may feel, you have that moment where you just feel very small and you just feel insignificant and you really have no desire or no reason to step out until the day comes that you think, today I'm going to not be clueless. I'm not going to be anything of that. I am going to look for someone who needs inspiration. And I think that would be my suggestion to anyone is look for the other people who might be looking for a friend or for guidance or just for a good example. And if I could be that someone, I think that is what I would want everyone to be. And so let's, and I feel like that is a good, a good jumping point. Why I went from where I was to the Spark School, because I feel like the Spark School just gave me that launch into a better, a better life or a better reason to live or better reason to want something. Yeah. One of the things I remember asking you in the group is what is possible for you now? You know, you have a whole different mentality. Once you've succeeded with something like you just have, you see something in yourself that it just changes your whole perspective and outlook on, on the next right. thing that's possible. Right. Right. So I would suggest think with a, a desire to want more for you. Think for you, not for anybody else, but just realize that you're worth it. You're important. And why not be the best you can be? What's the one thing that you would like to leave the listeners with that you've learned since the beginning of July? I think the one thing that I have learned is be brave and everything will work out. So just be brave. Yeah. Be brave by, I would say, stepping into who, what is possible for you. And right. you have done that. You are such a shining example of a midlife up level or a spark, as I like to call you, a sparked second half soul. And I'm so happy that we reconnected and you're just such a great ro role model for people um, of oh, what you can you. do. Yeah. What you can do in such a short amount of time. And I am a big fan of your podcast and I'll continue to be listening oh, and good. downloading episodes. And that's what you want. You want people to keep coming back, right? I do. All right. Thanks so much, Heidi. Thank you so much for tuning into the Not Your Average Lives podcast. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe on iTunes if you have an Apple device. You can find free resources and learn what else I have going on at the moment that might interest you on my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you liked this episode, it would make my heart so happy if you could leave me a five-star rating. You can also add a review to let me know what you like about this podcast, which will help spread the word about it to others who need a little midlife inspiration. As always, be you, listen to your inner voice, and focus on reigniting that lost spark so you can start living your own, not your average life. Thank you.